LeBron James, obviously the face of the NBA, spoke about it about a week ago and, you know, said that Kyrie was wrong and it was some, you know, he doesn't condone hate speech and things like that. And today, uh, was it today, Rob G? LeBron put out a tweet uh, saying that he thought the suspension and more so what they've asked Kyrie to do to come back from the suspension uh, was excessive. Rob G, can you read LeBron's tweet, if you don't mind? Sure thing. He said, I told you guys that I don't believe in sharing hurtful information, and I'll continue to be that way. But Kyrie apologized, and he should be able to play. That's what I think. It's that simple. Help him learn, but he should be playing. What he's asked to do to get back on the floor, I think is excessive. He's not the person that's being portrayed of him. Anyways, back to my rehab session. All right, so Ephraim, what what are your thoughts on this? You know, particularly as it relates to LeBron and well, the suspension I, and the Players Association. Let me let's throw this in before we mm -hmm. go further. The Players Association also uh, Jalen Brown, Kyrie is on the one of the officers of the Players Association. Is he the vice vice president? If I'm not mistaken, you know, one of the vice presidents and Jalen Brown. They they put out a statement a couple of weeks ago when this first hit saying they, of course, don't condone anti-Semitism and things of that nature in any way, shape, or form. They didn't mention Kyrie. But I la late last week, Rob G., or earlier this week, they came out with a statement, Jalen Brown being the spokesman, uh, similar to LeBron. Do you want to read that one or at least portion a portion of that one, Rob G.? From sure. Jalen Brown. Sure. So Jalen Brown, again, this is all in response to the six-step uh, reinstatement plan that the Nets put out. And here's what Jalen Brown said to the Boston Globe. I don't believe Kyrie Irving is anti-Semitic. I don't think people in our governing bodies think he's anti-Semitic. He made a mistake. There's an interesting distinction between what somebody says verbally and what somebody posts a link on a platform with no description behind it. Some people argue there's no difference. Some people argue there's a difference. There's no language in our CBA. There's no rules against it. This is uncharted territory for everybody, and everybody's trying to figure out the difference between the two. The terms for his return seem like a lot, and a lot of the players expressed discomfort with those terms. Let me quickly say this, Ephraim, and then I want to get your thoughts. Okay. I, I think that's a very... Uh, strong. I think that's a really solid statement from Jalen Brown um, because he's right. There is a difference between posting something and saying something yourself. I said from the get go, I don't think Kyrie Irving should have been suspended. I don't think individuals should be suspended or certainly not fired for their personal beliefs, as long as they're not promoting violence against another group of people. Um, and I think, like, I believe, like, I, I think Kyrie, I don't think he's anti-Semitic at all. Um, and I think most people don't believe he's anti-Semitic. And I think he saw something that he thought was, you know, solid, black history and he wanted to promote some black history. Uh, and I think that's what he posted. I don't personally believe initially, at least that he had even seen the whole documentary or read it. Um, he did. He should have apologized I, when he first put out his statement. Well, that's the problem. Right. I, I think, think he should have apologized, yeah. but, but go, I just think like, like, um, I, I think, let me say this last thing. If I promote on my Instagram, like one of my favorite books, the autobiography of Malcolm X. And if I promoted that on my Instagram and said, I think y'all should read this. That doesn't mean that I endorse or agree with everything Malcolm X believed or said. Malcolm X, I'm a Christian. He says some very negative and just false things about Christianity. Um, his theology when he was in the nation of Islam for most of his adult life was erroneous. And to be honest, science fiction. And I don't endorse that, but I still was able to learn some things from Malcolm X. So my point is, 
there I get what Jalen's saying, and I think that's strong, and I think that's true, that you can learn something from somebody and still not agree with everything they say or do. I, I, Muhammad Ali, I learned from him, it w- w- was a big fan of his. Most of his prime as a boxer, he was in the Nation of Islam, which had a theology saying white people were devils. So did, did, does that mean you endorse all of that? because you like Muhammad Ali and learn some things from him. So that's why I like what Jalen Brown said. But go uh, go ahead, Ephraim. Uh, first of all, that was well put by Jalen Brown, and it, it was spot on. Right. Um, I also uh, like what you said in terms of, you know, posting things that you like. You may not agree with everything, but this is this is something that obviously your followers or whoever is you know looking at your page. This is something you they could check out or for whatever reason right. you can either take something from it or or not either or. You coming out and making a statement is coming from you, right? right? If I write a statement right. on There's Twitter and 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 boom, I send that out. Those are my words. Those are my thoughts. Those are my reflections. Right. So they are to be held differently than. If you like a tweet or you repost something, y'all check this out. Um, I think the problem came when it was brought to his attention. Right. The aloofness, the, uh, you know, the stubbornness, because we've seen this before with him. Yep. There's a, yep. His, there's a history, totally there's a past agree. here. Yep. I think people immediately went zero to a thousand. Like we, yep. oh no, this is, this is too much. Right. Because there's very little growth or remorse when speaking to him about the issue. And and I, and I think that's what, what people have the problem. Right. I agree. If you talk long enough, you're going to say some things you got no business saying. Okay? I've been married. We, I've been with my wife 19 years. Okay? I, you, I live by walking into uh, landmines. <laughs> okay, baby, I didn't mean that. Like, that's not what I right. said. I didn't right. Like, right. you, dude, this is this is human nature. This is right. this is our life. Okay, right. and to be, you know, publicly castrated and 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 to be demonized, um, for you know, th- this isn't. Think about what Mel Gibson did when he got pulled over by the police. Right, right, right. Right. He went crazy. Yep. Him personally. Yep. On tape. Point. He's still Very making movies. Point. Yep. He's still getting nominated. Right? Like this this is the, You're right. So when you when you take this type of stance on Kyrie Irving and look, I don't agree with most of the stuff Kyrie says. Right. I just <laughs> found out Earlier this this summer, that he was Muslim. I didn't even know Kyrie was Muslim. He talking about fasting. I'm like, uh, oh, when he did Ramadan, right? right. Like, I, and I don't know playing. if he's Muslim right. or if he was just observing I, Ramadan. I, I don't know. I gotta be honest. I think I, one, one. I definitely think Kyrie is on a search uh, for an identity. That's evident. That's evident. Right. And what? you know this, e from a lot of young black men because African Americans have been cut off from our African heritage yes. and history. Yes. And a lot of young br- black men in particular, obviously black people of, of all genders do it or have done it. Mm-hmm. But ca- the difference is, and I got family and friends who've gone through similar searches. The difference is most young black men go through this type of growth, search, everything anonymously, right? You Nobody knows you except your family, your friends, and you know, Kyrie is doing it in the fishbowl of the NBA. Right. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar went through it. We changed his name from Lou Alcindor to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And then he changed from one form of Islam to more of an orthodox form of Islam. Which Malcolm X did as well. Yep. Malcolm, S- Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, Ali. My father. Yep, yep. Right. I figured, I figured that, so, you know, knowing you're Muslim and your name that your family had probably of, of something course. similar. But, yep. but but in this country in that time in the '60s, when African when the African uh, American community was being fractured, people were looking for something to 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 bond and, and to galvanize and to be and to become one with. 
Right. And the nation of Islam, the radical form of Islam itself, was birthed to bring solidarity to and, and, and stop uh, police brutality. Right. Right. This is after the, the, uh, the Black Panthers uh, were disbanded and, and people were searching for my father was one of my father was in seminary school. Wow. Right? Like so this is And he joined he and left it, that and joined the nation. Right? My my mother um and her girlfriend were out shopping one time and, and a sister came up to him and said, Hey, uh uh sister, w- would you like to come uh you know to the temple and, and here and so they went and, and her and my mom in, introduced my dad to it and my dad went militant in it. He was he was a military <laughs> man. So he went he came home with like it ain't no more Christmas and just you know, <laughs> kicked the Christmas tree out 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 the house. But I say that to say you know, it's a dis- everybody has the right to um to 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 grow to self discover. Right, right. And that's what like to your point, my brother was in the nation of Islam, joined it in college at Howard University, was in it for eight years, mm-hmm. did security at the Million Man March in nineteen ninety five. And so, like you said, brother, he's out of it now, been out of it for decades now, but you grow and um I, I just think that, that that's what Kyrie's going through is growth. Now, you we agree on, on much of this, but one thing you said I want to highlight, and this is, even though I didn't feel like Kyrie should have been suspended, I did feel like this is where he really went wrong. Once it was brought to his attention, as you said, right. just apologize. That's it. And particularly because Ephraim, no one was asking him to apologize for saying the biblical Jews were black. Or for for being pro black and promoting black history, even some of the comments he made during his you know meetings with the media, they were at, he admitted there were things in that documentary, i.e. or slash book, that were falsehoods that were hurtful to the Jewish community mm-hmm. and that did not represent his morals and principles. Those are the things people wanted him to apologize for. Right? Had he done that, this whole thing would be. And and there's the and therein and lies the problem, and therein lies right. the problem. Like as someone who is on a journey of enlightenment or whatever that is, then you have to be able to stand in your mistake or right, or, right, right. Like that. he said in his statement, he's willing to listen and learn, and and that's the, that's, and and, to and that that's effect, it. Something to that effect, right? But don't take the stance of. You're not gonna make me do nothing, right? right? Like, like right. because because it, right. that in itself isn't growth, right? Right. 